Welcome to the Wealth Stream Podcast. The team at Hightower Great Lakes share their insights and passions for empowering their clients to live their best life. In this energetic podcast, we will take you on a journey to help you navigate your financial future, overcome life's challenges to reach your financial goals, and find the financial clarity you've been searching for. Let's explore the downstream impact of your wealth and what it means to you, your family, and your community to live greater. Hello and welcome to the Wealth Stream with Tim Scannell from High Tower Great Lakes. Good morning, Tim. How are you? I'm doing great, Eric. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. The 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 big F word of the day. Fantastic. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Fun. <laughs> oh, fun. The small F word of the day. That's yeah. That's right. That's it's mm-hmm. good stuff. What are we talking about today? I know we're actually I already know we're having some fun today with this topic. But why did you choose this specific topic and, and then share, of course, with the audience? So through COVID. I've had a lot of the meetings we've had with clients in addition to advising them, I've had a number of them reach out to me and to our team and say, Hey, how are you guys doing? You know, mm-hmm. what, what do you, what is your business doing to respond? And you know, how, how are we making sure that we're a durable, sustainable business for the, for their families, for the next generation? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought I put together what I called like a state of the union, right? Tower Great Lakes. There's a lot to cover. So I wanted to maybe make this episode today part one where we talk about maybe some working from home best practices that we've picked up, uh, some of the things we're doing, how we're helping clients by working remote, how I've seen other clients and other people work remote and best practices for that. And then the second part will be, we actually, Eric, I don't know if I ever told you, but you know, for 30 years I was an independent advisor by myself and so were my two partners, Blair and Steve. And we, after long conversations and work, we merged in, in the end of 2018 into High Tower Great Lakes. So mm-hmm. we're just coming on our two-year anniversary. So I thought I would talk about that in part two, about how, you know, the state of the firm and how it's the things we're doing to help our clients. And then the final part would be part three. And this is like one word to describe 2020. And I, I promise it'll be words that one word your kids can listen to, you know, <laughs> With COVID, I think people are thinking different things, but, and then also maybe giving our High Tower Great Lakes perspective on what we're doing and what people should be doing as we get into 2021 beyond the election, which is happening next week. Absolutely. That's what I wanted to do. Nice. And I'm going to challenge right now, since part three is a few weeks away, I want any listener right now that wants to hazard a guess, wants to take a guess at what that one word would be to email it to Tim. Just email him one word. That's it. So at the end of this podcast, I want you to give out your email address, and I want any listener that is uh, daring enough to take a guess at the one word to describe 2020 that Tim is thinking, and then, you know you know what, shoot, email two words. The word you would describe 2020 with, <laughs> Tim can take it. It's okay. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm All willing right. to bet there's a theme that's going to come through, but I, you know, hopefully uh, they'll guess my word too. But yeah. My yeah, word be- is is okay. Not, you know, is it's talk about or I can say it family friendly. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, let's, let's start with part one. We'll get to part three in a few weeks. Perfect. So what I thought I'd cover today is what I would call like best practices for working at home. And I think the key takeaways that a listener might have is you have to arm yourself with great video and other technology. You really need to set up kind of a dedicated workspace. And I know you do this, Eric. Mm -hmm. And then hardest part, I think I have found in my team has found and talking to clients is really establishing routines. You know, Eric, I know you have historically worked from home and you, you probably have separate locations, separate space, good routines, but this has been a real learning process for a lot of people from what I've talked to and, and what we've done, establishing those routine routines when you're actually at home. And you know, how do you do that when there's a, obviously a lot going on at home? So those yeah. are the takeaways that I want to cover. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, I'll just, speak on one just for a moment, it really depends on where you're at, right? I mean, I know you're going to get into this as well, but I'm blessed that I'm working from home and I have a house that I have multiple rooms in and and multiple levels. But one of the gentlemen that I work with, he's in New York and him and his wife are in a very small apartment that probably costs three times as much as my house to pay for on a monthly basis. They're they don't have space to go to, (laughs) you know, they're, they're working from the kitchen or they're working from the one other room because it's just a one bedroom place, but it really depends on where you're at. And boy, everybody has to make adjustments, right? Exactly. And, you know, even going back to 
before COVID, you know, I had read a report where they said back in the 80s, about half a million Americans worked from home. And then through last year, it was about three and a half million. And I haven't seen any numbers, but I'm willing to guess that it's at least 10 times that right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And whether that's temporary or permanent. And I'm seeing, I'm reading more about a lot of companies deciding that this might be working out, that they may actually reduce some of their office space, brick and mortar, and continue doing this. So, you know, that's the why I think this topic is important and why I wanted to cover it. Because, you know, my family, you know, I've, I've got niece, my goddaughter who works for Google in Chicago, and, mm. you know, they said four months ago they're not going to come back till June of next year. And yeah. you know, I have a brother who works for Blue Cross Blue Shield and manages their properties and just trying to get people back into the buildings in downtown Chicago and to get them to take public transportation and, all, you know, take an elevator, all these different things. And, mm. you know, there's just, it's happening everywhere. And, and Eric, I just had two virtual con uh, conferences last week. These are conferences that I normally would attend. One was supposed to be in Nashville. The other was supposed to be out in San Francisco. And we all did it virtually. And it works, but we're all, I think we're all trying to figure out how to make it better. What are the best practices so that we can, as much as possible, survive this and, and make it seem like it's productive? Yeah, that's that's tough. I, I have not done any virtual conferences, but I, I can imagine that it would be very difficult, at least for me. I'm I'm uh, kind of an extrovert. I don't know if you've noticed that, Tim, but <laughs> yes, a little, did, yes. little bit of an extrovert. And so those conferences are I, my favorite part, besides learning new things, is being able to talk with other people and hang out with other people and go to dinner with other people and just, you know, communicate and network or whatever you want to call it. I don't even worry about networking so much, just getting to know other people and virtual conferences. It's not like you can have side conversations and, and things like that. Hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times at the conference where I get the most benefit is collaborating and networking yeah. with other advisors and peers at night after the, the seminars are over. And so on this one conference last week, they did have a virtual, you could either attend a virtual event where there was an, a cook making food, and there was another one that doing an Oktoberfest beer drinking. And I thought, everyone's just in their room <laughs> drinking beer, but they're at this virtual event. It just seems so weird, you know? <laughs> are they virtually getting drunk or are they actually getting, sorry. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah. What, yeah. So it's just not the huh. same. And I, no. we're all trying to figure it out, but certainly it's not the same. But we can, hopefully with some of these best practices, we can help get it closer, you know, to the same. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's start talking about it. So the first one is your gear. And actually, Top Advisor Marketing, Eric, you've been practice this a lot. One of the things that I've been grateful for the most about the podcast process is your initial insistence that we get good microphones, good gear. And, and I think as it relates to these virtual conferences and meetings, and that's, that's a key. I mean, you need, I've had, I've been on meetings where somebody was using their iPhone and dialing in, you know, from their car. And it's just not the same as if you have a laptop and a monitor and a headset and Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. I, I really think you need to invest and it's not that expensive. And actually, if anyone's interested, we have kind of a Zoom guide or video conference guide that we could send or we could give people. But I, I definitely think you need to get the good equipment. Yeah, 100%. And, and I would even go one step further with anybody who's getting headphones to get either noise canceling headphones or the old school studio headphones like I've got on right now and Tim's got on right now that cup over your ear because it really does reduce distractions. And I think that's one of the biggest things that uh, biggest hurdles that people need to overcome when working virtually or working from home is just those little things that can draw your attention away. And if you can just kind of block those out a little bit so you can focus on the meeting at hand or the time spent with whoever you're online with at that moment, that makes a big difference. Yeah, and you know, I, even the camera, I, I, most laptops and computers have a you know their own camera, but a separate camera I think is so important, not just because it's a typically better visual, but also it can be adjustable. I mean, how many times have you been on a Zoom meeting where you're just looking up somebody's nose you know, because they're, they're staring down at the laptop and it's just not eye level. And, you know, so and a camera can really help just make things more collaborative and friendly, I think, you know. Yeah. It's uh, it's like FaceTime with my mother-in-law. She, she holds it <laughs> by her chest and then points it up. And I'm like, mom, 
mom, all we see is chin and up your nose. And, and yeah. a lot of people do that with zoom too. Cause they're, they're getting in through zoom or these other things on their phone, not realizing that if they're holding it down <laughs> and it's pointing up, it's just not a good view y'all. <laughs> yeah. It really isn't. And, and the other part too is lighting, you know? Yeah. So you could have a great camera and you could have it all set up, but I do have just a, a light that I purchased, you know, very inexpensive on Amazon and just flip that thing on and it just looks so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you add that, like in Zoom, we use primarily Zoom a lot. I use different backgrounds just to kind of lighten it up a little. So I have a couple of Notre Dame uh, clients, graduates of Notre Dame. So I have a picture of like I'm sitting in the Notre Dame Stadium or I can sit in the White Sox U.S. Cellular. Or actually, nice. for one of my clients who loves Disneyland, I've got a nice big picture of the Disneyland behind me. So you can have kind of fun with it a little too, but it, it just visually more enjoyable i think if it's lighter and if it's a good camera and it's a you're looking i you know eye to eye into the camera yeah absolutely the other part too just the last part about gear is you know cybersecurity is a big one so when we covid first happened through hightower our compliance broker dealer we had primarily used webex and it was just very difficult for clients to get onto it so we started using zoom and there was a big issue about security Fortunately, Hightower really proactively jumped on it, kind of created an enterprise version of it with additional security. But if you're doing these things, you just want to make sure there's just simple processes to make sure that no one's going to be Zoom bombing you or logging in or coming in to take your information because that's a real big risk right now. So you got to be really careful about that. Good point. So the next area would be what I would call your space. So you've got the gear. You've got the great microphone, everything, the, you know, you've got it connected to your laptop. I really think that, well, in a perfect world, right, you're, you have dedicated workspace. Now, I'll just give you an example, though. I understand it's difficult. I've talked to a couple of partners, vendors that I use in New York, and <laughs> New York space is just so limited, right? They're right in downtown Manhattan. Mm-hmm. They're in their apartment. They're paying gobs of money for, you know, 400 square feet. And in this case, the person I was collaborating with and his wife are both working at home and they're kind of sharing little one little room. So I understand you can't always have dedicated space versus here in Indiana where you've got nothing but space. But in a perfect world, if possible, you want to have some separate space just so psychologically, you know, I'm going to work. This is separate. I'm not going to be bothered. I know, Eric, that's what you do when you, you know, do podcasts like this. Yeah, absolutely. My wife and I are both working from home and you know, I do a lot of recording throughout the day for different reasons, and we have a flush schedule, right? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> mm. Tim, I, I don't let her flush the toilet. Um, uh, I'm just that go. mean. Exactly. I'm just that mean. No, it, it's the, the fact that I'm my office is in the basement, and all the water pipes run through here, and so it's not the ambience sound of you know a waterfall behind me. That's a toilet flushing. So we mm-hmm. we have to avoid that. And the other part too, like one thing I was telling somebody last week is with pets, you know, and I think pets are cute and I'm a pet lover. I find it so interesting that people who have cats, somehow cats always seem to want to get in the zoom spot. You know, Mm. I have uh, like Samantha, who you've talked to, she works with me and she's got cats and it would be whenever I would have her on a zoom meeting and I was talking to her, sure enough, Mr. Binks would walk right by on her back, you know? So, and, and I think that's not a problem. I just think that, you know, a dedicated space sometimes where family and pets and everyone kind of knows this is for work and this is where I go. And, and if possible, don't, sh- don't set up shop in the bedroom just because then it just affects your sleep patterns and all those things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other part too is once you have your space, I don't know what you do, Eric, but you know, you really just want a, a comfortable chair, ergonomic keyboard, you know, the headsets, I mean, everything really needs to be set up. Like, um, and my wife, Nancy Peloton, I can never say that properly. So she got me a Peloton. Thank you. But you know, she's the one who uses it all the time. So uh-huh. it's like uh, when my son, Kevin gave me a squirt gun for his, for my birthday years ago, a super <laughs> squirter. So, but I've, I've seen her on conferences and things on the Peloton. I'm like, that is not a good idea. So that's just my personal opinion. But <laughs> if you're going to be, if we're going to be doing this a lot, you don't want to hurt yourself, you know? You don't want to have it create stress, create a bad back, create bad wrist monitors, things like that. So in your space, you really need to structure it for your health. So yeah. That would be another recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got a new chair this year and 
I, I was thinking this is going to be great, so on and so forth. And it's a good chair, Tim. It, it is a good chair, but I still find myself, I got to grab a back pillow, you know, because I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to have the best posture in this chair at this point and so on and so forth. So all those little adjustments that you have to do, I stand as, you know, as much as I can, but boy, it's, it's, it's tough. Sometimes you just get tired and you want to sit down and do nothing. Yeah, no, exactly. And you know, the other part too, the, I guess, in addition to having your space, you know, I've really found in talking to other people that you need to kind of create these habits that you might have. So I'm sure, you know, when you, I vision Eric, you down in a bunker in Nebraska, you know, in your, your basement, of course. <laughs> it's, it's your habit and you're down there. And when you're down there, people know you're there for work and you've got a chair and a, maybe a pleasant view. I don't know what your view is, but you know, you want to create these firm boundaries. Um, like when I get on a zoom meeting, when I get on a call or when podcasting now, I close the door so that everyone knows I'm working. Don't knock. And I've actually seen, I've had a couple of meetings where I've seen in the background where people hang blinds, some signal that this is work. And especially if you have kids. And I know I talked to um, one of my clients who has kids and she said that, you know, when she puts on the headphones, they know, the kids know at least that that's kind of a physical signal not to bother them, you know. So it's these, it's these habits to create boundaries that I think are really important. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was thinking, because my parents live close and, and I love when they visit and I love when other family members visit and friends visit and stuff, but I do a lot of recording, Tim, you know that, and and for, for different reasons. And when I'm recording, any noise can really be distracting and also we just don't want it on the recording. So I was really thinking about changing the light bulb on my front porch to a red light so people knew that I was recording, but then I thought people might get confused of what that red light means. <laughs> Yeah, so exactly. I, I I said no to that. I, I cha- so now I just have a a little sign that's you know on my door you know recording. We mm-hmm. do it that way. Exactly. Do not knock or that's right. recording. <laughs> that's Leave right. me alone. That's right. Go away. Get off my lawn. I'm I'm, I'm that guy now, Tim. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Good kids, get off my lawn. Anyway, sorry. yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I didn't tell Nancy I was going to say this, but she was on a Zoom meeting and she won't mind where. It was going on and on, so she's very. She likes to exercise, so she got it, got down on the floor and was doing push-ups. And she forgot to turn her camera off, and some guys like good form. <laughs> so you really need to be careful, you know. It's like yeah, uh, get habits, you know. Yeah, pants, flip pants are a must. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Flip yeah. off the volume, flip off the camera, etc. Yeah, and then also you know is relating to habits, just establish a routine. So I'm very much a morning person. I like to do these podcasts in the morning. I like to do as many of the calls in the morning. I also like to have usually Monday mornings and Friday afternoons is what I call kind of buffer time. Mm-hmm. So I can prep for the week or, or kind of go back and record what happened and create tasks for the next week. Those kind of things are even more important when you're working at home or remote. You don't have the physical separation, the time separation of going to and from the office. I really think you need to do that and schedule breaks. I read somewhere where it's just not a good idea to eat, you know, at, you know, where you're doing your work. And I, and mm-hmm. I agree with that just to force yourself just to get up, walk and move around. So things you would normally do at the office, go into the coffee, you know, to the coffee, um, get some coffee or whatever. Mm-hmm. You just don't do when you're remote and you just need to f- and like physically schedule those things to make it happen. Yeah. I'll, and everybody's different. We know that, but Tim, my wife, she loves to get away from, you know, her desk, and she is, she has, her time is a little bit flexible. She clocks out and she'll clock back in. But if she clocks out for a half an hour, she likes to go and do something else. It, it, when, when it was warm, she would go on the back porch and, and get into the hammock for a little bit and maybe listen to a little bit of music or read a book. But one of the other things that she likes to do is she likes to find something that she can accomplish around the house that she couldn't have done before, right? Because if you're at work, you can't do anything around the house. But so it's almost like, that double feeling of accomplishment. You're working, you're doing great, and then you take a break and you do something around the house that normally would have had to have waited till after work or whatever, whether unloading the dishwasher or doing one small simple task, vacuuming one room. It, it really feels good to get those things done and and get away from your desk, but yet you've accomplished something else that you normally would have had to put off. No, I, I think it's all these things you got to think about that maybe you didn't in the past, you know? Yeah. So another kind of habit, or, uh, and this more relates to just the whole psychology and working with 
as a team and working for and with people is you need to more proactively, what I call, show your work. So when people on our team are working remote or, you know, we've got three offices in Traverse City, Michigan, Valparaiso, Chicago. So it's not like we're all seeing each other all the time working. I have a tremendous amount of trust and respect for everyone on our team. And I, I you know, I, I know just from looking at tasks and looking at the workflow that sometimes they actually work more remotely than mm -hmm. they do in the office. But I think there's this perception, old school perception by, you know, some bosses, some managers that feel like the at-home workers just don't work as, they don't stay as focused, they don't stay as driven. I don't believe that. But at the same time, what I would say is if you're working at home, don't assume, eliminate doubts, make sure that the tasks and the tracking and the workflow you're doing is transparent and out there. So like we use Salesforce as our primary task manager, workflow manager, you know, I see the tasks that I'm delegating or passing or that people are delegating or passing back to me. Make that open and apparent and, you know, make sure that you're communicating that you are doing the work. And like I said, I, I, I completely trust my team, but I know then like from talking to other people that there's just this natural old school inclination to not think that you're working as hard. Mm -hmm. So just, just make sure you're showing your work. I think that'll help in terms of the, you know, the relationships you might have with your bosses. Yeah, I agree 100%. I would say that a lot of times the cream does rise to the top, right? So mm -hmm. that the best workers are going to be able to show themselves very easily and quickly. But at the same time, you don't count on that, right? Don't don't count on them, you know, your boss is noticing you. I mean, again, make that concerted effort, like Tim's saying, to be able to prove the work you've done. Because let's be honest, when companies are looking at eliminating overhead, and eliminating space and people are being more efficient at home, that means that there will be less job opportunities in a lot of ways. They, they can eliminate mm -hmm. some people. Who are they going to eliminate? Well, they're going to eliminate the people that aren't proving themselves and that, that aren't you know doing the best work or best quality work or that aren't bringing the most value. Not that you have to work extra, but just inherently there are going to be some people who are going to take advantage of being at home and watch Netflix for six hours and then work for two and say, Hey, eight hour day, great stuff. <laughs> you, <laughs> exactly. you know what I'm saying? So uh, it just, it, it's more important now than ever that when companies are looking at reducing overhead, that you do need to be that cream that rises to the top. Yeah. And another thing too is, and I'm sure you've seen this, Eric, if you've been on Zoom or WebEx meetings, we all need to make sure, kind of go back and revisit our communication, our kind of dress for success skills, you know, in the first three or four months, I'm a big hockey fan. So, you know, one of the things that I always see, like when they go to the playoffs or the Stanley Cup, is a lot of the hockey players don't shave. You know, they accumulate these the, the stubble. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the first three or four months, obviously, you'd see a lot of people who were pretty much always dressed for success, kind of. And I was, you know, they just weren't as much. And, you know, so I would just gently tease them. I'm like, hey, you know, uh, you, you're allowed to get dressed up for me, you know. <laughs> You're allowed to, you can, you still may need to take a shower. I'm just saying, even though it's, it's remote. It's and not smell vision It's not common. <laughs> yeah. Thank, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully it's not smell vision you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and so I just think that, you know, even more so with these, these remote conferences, you just need to make sure that you're prepared. You're physically prepared. You're, you know, even just like tone and style. I've been on a number of these where you can just see some people are checking out or they're trying to multitask and check, check their emails. And those are things you wouldn't do if you were like in a conference room meeting with somebody. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that I think actually when you're on screen, people notice people watch you a little more than they might, even if you were just all in the same room at a conference table. So just, you know, revisit all those communication, not, you know, nonverbal and those personal skills, things like that. Yeah. Very true. And then the final one is in terms of best practices for working remote, I think we all need to, continue to figure out ways to stay connected beyond business. You know, I, I'm, I'm in Indi Indiana where we're at in Valparaiso anyway, we are back and we're, you know, the, op the office is fully open. We've been open for five or six weeks, whereas our Chicago office likely won't be open till May or June. So it's hard to stay connected. When we were going through COVID and we weren't open, I missed the camaraderie, camaraderie among my team in, in Valpo. I mean, it's a super young, super smart team. I like talking to them. It's just fun collaborating. I get more out of just walking 
next door to talk to Justin or Samantha or Wes than I would if I was just, you know, doing a Zoom meeting with them. So we just all need to kind of somehow create these casual, not, not just with work, but also with family. Like one thing we did for my granddaughter Eileen's birthday, we had kind of a, we had a Zoom meeting. My son in LA, my, my daughter in St. Louis, you know, all around the country, we all kind of dialed in. And then Eileen led a kind of an I spy game. Mm. Um, so if she said like M, you know, everyone had to run around the house and find something that starts oh, with an fantastic. M. So it was kind of fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't nearly as fun as it would have been if she was in the room and we were all in the room, but it, it was fun. So, but you have to figure out ways to do that to kind of keep the collaboration going. Yeah, absolutely. That, that sounds fun. That, that Doug and I'm going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That sounds so, like it would be a really good time and some exercise. Oh yeah. It, it was funny, you know, <laughs> just people like all of a sudden leaving the screen and yeah. then showing up with something that starts with an A or B or, you know, it's yeah, kind of just a random item. Yep. So I, I don't know, Eric, how long these COVID protocols will continue and make probably going to next year. Who knows how much further? I don't know how long, even if, if, even if the COVID protocols end, if remote working will be kind of the new normal for some industries. So mm-hmm. I just thought one of the takeaways, because I've done, I never did a Zoom meeting in my life until COVID, and now I've done 200 plus. Mm-hmm. I just thought one thing we could do is, as a starting point is share some best practices that we've learned, share how we're kind of trying to approach um, this with our clients, where we offer Zoom or call or in-person meeting, you know, whatever they prefer, and then talk and share some of the things we've learned as kind of the first part of this uh, State of the Union series. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is this is great, great information and a lot of fun, Tim. Thank you so much. I, I look forward to part two. Yeah. So in part two, I thought we would kind of talk about our two year anniversary for our merger and mm-hmm. the formation of High Tower Great Lakes and some of the things we've done and will continue to do to make sure we're serving our clients. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Last thing is your email address so people can email you the word. Yeah, they email me the word, and also if you are interested in getting our like Zoom video conference guide, it's tscanell at hightoweradvisors.com, or give me a call at 219-246-5370. All right. Thank you so much, Tim. This was fantastic. Oh, thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun. You bet. And the last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Wall Street Podcast with Tim Scannell. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Tim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And since most of your friends and family are probably working virtually, this would be a great one to share. Then they can come up with their own word. You guys can discuss it and then email it to Tim. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Hightower Great Lakes, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealth Stream Podcast. We hope you gained some valuable insight that you can apply to your life and share with others. Please don't forget to subscribe below to be notified when new episodes become available. And don't forget to live greater. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Great Lakes. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Great Lakes is a group of investment professionals registered with Hightower Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC, and with Hightower Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors, LLC. 